All right, in typical fashion, the uh, battery on the phone was dying. Um, so I had to go get a quick charger. So what you have uh, with it come, when it comes to these uh, fuel injectors being connected to the fuel rail, you have these clips. See that clip? Oh, it's got ears. It's got a little slit in the side there. Um, you can sort of see uh, by looking there, you know, where and how it connects. Um, and there's one that's actually removed. You see the, uh, the slits or the keepers in this uh, spring uh, sort of go around the top of there and, and keep it retained to the, um, to the fuel injector itself. So uh, you can get in there with a very long screwdriver, sort of pry out, um, pry out this side here a bit, pry out that side a bit, and best to kind of go down with them. But again, you know, keep, keep your hands around um, uh, where these go. You don't want to lose this thing in the engine compartment somewhere. Okay, so we have the uh, all the clips off the fuel rail. Now we're gonna have to come in, remove this screw here and this screw here, and there's another one on the other side. I say screw. Sorry, it's a, it's actually a nut uh, or bolt um, that screws it down into the head. So we'll remove those two, and then you you know you really gently kind of rack this thing side to side, and the entire thing will come up. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that process. Do not start this project without one of these. <laughs> it's a plunge grabber. Uh, I happen to have a uh, Neridium magnet in there. It's you know rare earth magnet, very strong magnet. You know naturally when I was removing uh, this screw that's that's down in here, um, got a case of the Butterfingers and dropped it and doggone if it didn't go right straight down into the uh, the well where the spark plug is and well. You get that grabber down in there. Of course, it wants to grab a hold of everything else with the magnet, but I could have done it without the magnet. Um, but yeah, have yourself one of these or a lot of patience trying to get it with a pair of uh, pliers or something like that. These are cheap. Pick them up at Harbor Freight, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. You know, I'm telling you now, if you spend 10 bucks on it, you'll still be glad you did. So you can see here, I'm just gently pulling up on the uh, fuel rail and this side, what brought the injectors and everything out which tells me I may need some O-rings on there. So, like I said, it's worth it, just get them now. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing here, just gently wiggle, gentle pressure pulling up on this guy. There we go, oh, look at the fuel coming out of there. Um, you know, it's still a little pressure in there. You saw me, the video showed it. I did remove fuel system pressure, but Oh, well, we'll get some rags in there. You see that? This one came off as well. This one came off the injector. This one came off the injector. The injector came off with the fuel rail. Oh, well, we're getting this booger out of our way. Uh, we'll kind of set it over to the side. We could disconnect it from uh, these lines. And I may end up doing that because, you know, it's kind of kind of rigid. May end up being all in my way. And I can't have my box of rags standing by. All right, hands smell like gas and uh, fuel rail is completely disconnected. Uh, check it out. Check out this uh, injector. Look at the funk. Uh, we're gonna do what we can to get those cleaned up. Pick up a little uh, parts cleaner with the auto parts store. Here's one of the O-rings I was talking about. Uh, and then the other O-ring is right here on this injector. These are the ones that'll get flattened out. I mean, uh, they're in use constantly. Um, so uh, anyway, we're gonna move on uh, to the uh, two injectors that we couldn't quite get the uh, harness off of in the position they were in. So. I'll try and get those and get a view of those so you can see the harnesses. But in the meantime, I'm going to swing this thing out of my way. All right, so if you have a uh, some injector wiring uh, that the harness is just really being a pain in the ass, um, and actually you're going to pull back on this red piece first, and you can get right down inside of there, see if I can get a good focus on that. You see the little black bit that's inside of there? Just gently pry up on that with the screwdriver, and uh, you're going to release that, and there it comes off. And look at the funk on this fuel injector. Now, mind you, out of those little perforations um, is where the gasoline actually comes out, but uh, yeah, everything around it, pretty funky. Kind of tells you what the uh, inside of the cylinder wall, the top of the cylinder wall, perhaps the top of the piston uh, looks like. Um, kind of wish I had a borescope uh, with me to look down inside of there so I could see. Um, in result, I'll probably end up putting some fuel injection uh, cleaner, uh, general engine cleaner uh, in this entire system and 
running it through for a while, kind of clean a little of this funk up, but uh, nothing beats brand new, nothing beats replacing it, or at least cleaning these up the best we can. So here's the one where the, uh, the red harness retainer clip uh, was already gone, and uh, you see the, the little spring pack or the, the little spring release here is not doing anything when we go to push it. So I'm gonna get my screwdriver, I'm gonna go down inside of there, gently pry up on that little tooth just above my pinky there, and that'll slide right off. All right, just a quick look at all the injectors. Uh, um, I've done a little bit of cleaning uh, on this one. Um, not anything too substantial, but you can see it doesn't have the gunk all around it or whatever. Um, the O-ring uh, is somewhat flattened out, so I'm glad that when I go to the auto parts store, I'm gonna get myself some, uh, some new ones. But boy, look at this one. Look at that. I mean, that is just funky monkey. I like things clean, I like things nice. So uh, I'm gonna get that cleaned up. Also maybe get some electronic parts cleaner uh, to be able to spray inside of there, remove all that old uh, dielectric grease that they had in there. You know, it's gotten hot, it's kind of broken down a bit. Doesn't, doesn't render it useless, but hey, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna have all this apart, why not do some cleaning, right? All right, it's gonna be very difficult uh, to see this, but I'll do the best I can to get this camera angle. What I'm doing is I'm following this dipstick tube, the oil dipstick. And down in behind there, you have to have a socket with an extension. Um, let's see if I can block the camera for a second there. Um, there's a nut right there. You see that? And uh, once you remove that nut, it should be able to allow you to. There it is. It should allow you to then pull that dipstick uh, completely out of there. It's a bear to get down there too, but uh, should be able to do it. And then there's just uh, it's kind of a compression fitting where that um, little dipstick goes down through there. Um, kind of a nightmare to get to, but very worth pulling off of there because this thing's rigid. All right, so I've got a 12 inch extension on there. I'm hoping uh, to be able to get it on there. I may have to end up uh, changing out to either a, like a, a universal um, or U-joint kind of uh, uh, connector for my uh, socket or maybe put a wobble socket on there. Um, but I'm gonna pull that nut out of there and then hopefully should be able to work that oil dipstick out. All right, had to switch the old universal uh, to be able to get down in there. So let's see if we can get it. All right, now we switch to the wobble socket. It's a bitch to get to down in there. Uh, there's another hose that kind of gets in the way. So the UV um, or universal kind of the, uh, the knuckle joint uh, just couldn't get past that uh, other hose that's back there. Uh, so we're gonna try the wobble socket now. You see, it's got it's got a little play in it, so I can get it to the side a bit. Okay, woo! So I've got that loosened up. I'm gonna leave this extension on there and everything uh, because I do not want to lose that bolt. I'm still trying to figure out, um, you know, the best route to get that bolt back down in there. Maybe when I go to put this oil dipstick back in, I uh, kind of put it all in there as one piece. Maybe I use a little grease to keep the head of that uh, bolt on the uh, dipstick tube. Hell, I'm not above using a little uh, uh, super glue uh, just to keep it in place for a bit, uh, give me long enough to get down in there and start tightening down on it. So anyway, I'm gonna gingerly remove this thing, get it out of there, and uh, we'll move on to actually removing this cover. Okay, I've been fighting this thing a while <laughs> and I cannot get that oil dipstick uh, out of where it goes um, down inside. Uh, I just, I mean, I'm riding the struggle bus here. Uh, you, know, you don't want to put too much pressure on it. You don't want to put not enough, but boy, he's just it, being really stubborn. You see where it goes down in there. You see where the nut was that, uh, that has that in there. But you know, undoubtedly, I mean, there's a, there's a ring around there or something like that. And it's just, it's either flattened out or you know, I don't know. I can't really figure it out. Um, so <laughs> We'll see. I'm gonna see if I can get the uh, intake manifold off of there uh, without removing it. it may, uh, may prove to be a little bit challenging. May have to do a little bending or something like that. I'm, I'm just not sure just yet.